Hello everyone, Steve Zuckerman in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, here to talk a little bit about how systemic diseases may manifest with neurological problems. As much as I don't like talks which just list various disorders without any sort of framework, I actually see no way around it, so tough luck. The first sets of disorders that we'll talk about are endocrinological, excluding diabetes. And so in this little talk, we're going to go over thyroid diseases, adrenal disease, and then information regarding replacement of um, sex hormones. Beginning with thyroid disorders, first we'll discuss neurological problems seen in conjunction with hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis. The most common manifestations would have to be considered to be neuropsychiatric disorders and those can be anything from a mania to even including seizures. Now neuromuscular problems are also fairly common and that mostly includes a generalized weakness but there is a very rare condition but interesting nonetheless referred to as thyrotoxic periodic paralysis it's referred to like that because that's actually its name. Now, this was found to be, again, very rare, but most common in East Asian young men between the ages of 20 and 40. But even in that group, only a 1 or 2% of people can have it. And it's a disorder which is characterized by intermittent episodes lasting anywhere from a few hours to a day or two of weakness. And again, the weakness can also vary in its severity from some mild paresis to being completely paralyzed. The triggering factors that are associated with those attacks are that they tend to occur early in the morning. They may happen after vigorous exercise or activity they are also present after eating a large meal, particularly with carbohydrates or with alcohol. So that if you have this disorder and that you wake up early and have a huge plate of grits with uh, a Bloody Mary on the side and then go to the gym, you'll probably have an attack. But the good news is that you'll get better. The other condition which is fairly common in people with thyrotoxicosis is the presence of movement disorders and as you can see that's anywhere from 60 to 80 percent and far and away the most common movement disorder is that of a tremor and it's a fine tremor it's postural i.e it's worse when the arms are outstretched but other all forms of uh, movement disorders involuntary movements including choreoathetotic movements are possibly seen but again, there is good news in that when the thyrotoxicosis is controlled and treated, those movement disorders resolve. At the other end of the thyroid spectrum, hypothyroid conditions can also cause neurological problems. First and foremost is that of uh, psychomotor slowing. So reduction in the speed of cognition as well as the possibility of having a memory loss so that if someone presents with a dementia it's very reasonable to attain a thyroid panel however if the results uh, indicate a subclinical abnormality meaning an elevated TSH but normal free T3 and T4 levels it's not very likely at all that that elevated TSH is at all relevant in regards to that patient's cognitive disturbance. Another potential neurological problem with hypothyroidism is that of a cerebellar ataxia, which is seen predominantly in autoimmune thyroid disease, Hashimoto's disease, and is in fact um, associated with changes of atrophy affecting the vermis and uh, midline cerebellar structures 
the importance of knowing about this condition is that it is potentially reversible if caught early enough, but it would be unfortunately irreversible if not. Switching gears and, in fact, endocrinological organs, uh, adrenal disorders can also manifest as neurological problems. In terms of Cushing disease or hypercortisolemia, and of course, you can obtain a result of Cushing's disease either by intrinsic overproduction of hydrocortisone or exogenously given to patients by we physicians. And the major manifestations are either neuropsychiatric, frequently people will have mania, they'll have difficulty sleeping, they'll become depressed or fatigued, very, very common, and they have to stop the steroids at that point. Or they can also get a neuromuscular disorder, which is a myopathy, so that you'll see a typical pattern of proximal weakness, but that they'll have a normal CPK. Now, in regards to Addison's disease, or adrenal insufficiency with hypocortisolemia. Most of the manifestations that one sees are due to the electrolyte imbalances. Now, you can also get adrenally insufficient from having a trauma. So head or spinal cord trauma is at times associated with adrenal insufficiency. And if that gets very severe, then you can have altered mental status leading to either psychosis and even uh, in Addisonian crisis, a coma. And finally, no discussion of the endocrine system would be complete without mentioning the sex hormones. And in this case, I'm just going to discuss what evidence exists regarding hormone replacement therapy uh, the Women's Health Initiative in 2002 publicized that in postmenopausal women over 65, and in my experience most of them are, that there was actually a detrimental effect on both cognition and memory. And so they kept looking at, to see whether or not there was a group in which they could define some benefit. And so the Women's Health Initiative completed another study, but this time they used women between 50 and 55 year old who were, of course, postmenopausal, and they did not find any benefit on future cognition or reduction in dementia. They also didn't find any risk, but there was no benefit. Now, men take testosterone replacement at times for various reasons, and there really has not been any large-scale randomized or controlled study to show any advantages at all for cognition. But more recent studies have shown that there is somewhat of an increased risk for stroke, and so therefore not advisable if it can be avoided.